Um, my topic will be about Scrapy and Elasticsearch. Um, I haven't chosen this uh, this uh, components because to have another uh, buzzword in the title, but rather because I think they really fit nice together for my for my problem I had, and I hope that at the end of the talk you will think the same. So uh, I sometimes tweet. This is my Twitter handle. And yeah, let's start with the talk. Um, first, I would like to start with the motivation. Um, I'm, I, like, I like to run in my spare time. And together with a colleague, I've uh, co-founded uh, a website it's called uh, laflows.ca. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a site where we uh, um, do uh, competitive running events, uh, organize competitive, competitive running events in Zurich. So the basic idea is that we, we give a route, we give you a route, and then you can walk it on your own to, if you have a, a, re, a, a supported sports watch. And after you uh, run our, our, uh, our race, you can upload your, uh, your file from your watch, and then we will do uh, we will analyze that file that you haven't taken too much pauses and that you have, that you really followed our route. We do this with uh, PostGIS, and if uh, the validation of the file was successful, then um, yeah, you can compete. So um, now um, there are half a dozen different chronometry providers for races in Switzerland. So you can basically can go to, a, if you like running, you can go to a race every weekend nearly. And then there are these different chronometry providers that take the time. And uh, the problem now is that um, they all have websites, but there's no possibility to, uh, to do power, powerful search and aggregations of your running results. And there is no REST interface neither. So these uh, are three examples how these websites look like. You see uh, pretty old school uh, websites where you have the running results, um, but there's hardly any possibility to search for your running results. So, our vision was that it would be cool if you could aggregate all these running results together and make them searchable. So, can, so that I could, for instance, query all my run results where I was faster than uh, a, specific, a specific pace. Web scraping with Scrapey. So, we are all used to beautiful REST APIs. I have taken here an example from uh, Instagram. We have your uh, resources. You have a beautiful description of the, of the JSON uh, response. It's a no-brainer to, to, to call these uh, REST services and to get the data from them. But sometimes all we have is a plain old website. And there, for all these uh, running sites, there is no REST interface at all. So um, we somehow had to get to this, get to the data. Um, the example I will go through in, in this talk is from a running site that has, you see here, you have a basic filter. We have the, the kind of uh, the sport, the month, the year, the region, and then you choose uh, based on your interest and get run results, the different runs. And then you have uh, basically need to page through these run results. Um, for each run, you have here uh, the run results, and then you get to this page. And yeah, you see here uh, they are ordered based on the Alphabet of the of the run of the, of the names of the of the runners, and after you have chosen such uh, a page, you get to the run results, and there you have a category, a rank, a name, team name, time, pace, and so on. A lot of data. So the problem statement is: 
how do we get all the necessary pieces out of this, of the, out of this page. And our approach was that we used Scrapy for this. So uh, why did you choose a Scrapy? There are a lot of uh, libraries out there to parse HTML. Uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with Beautiful Soup, for instance. Uh, it's a nice library to scrape uh, um, non-valid sort of bad HTML. Um, there's um, LXML, that's a Pythonic binding for the well-known C libraries, uh, libxml2. And libxslt, uh, lxml is really lightning fast, uh, uh, bulletproof uh, library to, s to parse HTML and XML, of course. But these are just libraries to scrape the, the pages. What we actually needed was something more, and I will explain what that, that is. So, Scrapy is really a Python framework for making web crawlers. So there's a lot more in there than just to uh, scrape HTML. Um, I have a quote here from the Scrapy, frequently asked question side, so you can read it yourself. Uh, Scrapy is like comparing Jinja, beautiful soup to Scrapy is like comparing Jinja to Django, and that just says basically all, I think. So, the basic building blocks of Scrapy are the spiders. You get the data from, from a website. You, you, uh, with, by using these spiders, then you send them to an item pipeline. An item pipeline can, for instance, be a, a MongoDB pipeline where you persist your, these items, or it can be an Elasticsearch pipeline. That's what I've, I have chosen to to uh, persist the scraped running results. Then in the item pipeline, you can choose to send them to def null if you don't need these results. For instance, if they are not valid or they are not of interest based on your individual criteria. Um, if the items are valid, then they will go to the feed exporter and the feed exporter allows you to export the the items as uh, JSON, XML, C CSV, whatever you li like. So these are the basic building blocks of Scrapy. Um, okay, what do we need to scrape such a web page? I think first you need to understand your browser's dev tools. I've taken here uh, Firefox, for instance. So. Um, at the beginning, I, I looked at this web page and thought, how can I get all these running results? Because I need to get all the URLs to get to the, to the page with the results. So I did have a look at the dev tools and saw that the page does a HTTP post with this form data. And you see here the year, the, the location, the month. Um, yeah, you just need to fill these uh, parameters and, may, and do a HTTP POST request to page through all these running results. So how do we do this with, with uh, Scrapy? You see here an example spider. Um, so you extend from spider. Um, allowed domains is really quite important that it Otherwise, you might download the whole internet, so you better restrict it to, to a specific domain. You can give a name to your spider, and then you have the start requests method. That's basically just a generator function, um, which I will discuss next. But first, um, let's go through the code. Uh, so I have 12 months um, I'm interested in. I loop through them and, and execute fo form requests. So here is the generator, so I yield this request and Scrapy will just uh, collect these uh, requests and will then start requests in the asynchronously in, in the background to crawl these web pages. 
All right, so uh, it's quite a lot of code, and it's not PEP 8 compliant. Uh, it was so, so, so much code that I had to uh, do the intention uh, wrong. Uh, but yeah, let's go through it. So what I actually need to do is now I need to get to the, the URLs of, this, uh, of these links here to get to the run, run results. And to achieve this, I have to do uh, some CSS path expressions. Uh, you can also use XPath. It's also supported by Scrapy. I will show an example of an XPath expression later. But yeah, I, actually, I don't like this code at all because I use uh, hard-coded indexes. So if uh, the table columns change one time, then uh, my scraper will not, my spider will not work anymore. But unfortunately, the website here does not have any class names or does not use any IDs at all. So I basically was stuck with, with indexing. But yeah, then uh, I want to get the, all this uh, alphabetically all, all through all these run results. So I used, uh, I went through A to uh, Z and actually I, here I yielded uh, requests for all these different uh, run result pages. Request meta is a nice concept to store some metadata that you have available then in the, when you parse the response. And here is a code to loop through the different pages here. So you basically see we do go through recursively until there is a next page. So I use a CSS path expression to, to see if there is uh, a, next, a next link uh, to page through the run results. And as long as there is a next link, I yield requests to, to page through recursively. OK, now I have parsed all this. Um, actually, I only have the result lists. The re requested the result lists. Um, we will now show. How, I will now show how we can parse the actual running results. But first, another uh, example of uh, how to use the Dev tools uh, here in Chrome. If you need an XPath expression, you surely know how to to do this. You can just uh, select a node in the DOM and say copy XPath, and you have the XPath expression. What is but I, um, when I went through these uh, running results, I, yeah, there was a lot of messy data. Real data is, can get messy. So you have all different kinds of uh, um, different markers if, if a run or didn't complete a run. So there is a, a, a did not did not finish DNF, you see here. There are, sometimes there are, special symbols, um, there, uh, there are HTML links inside of this, uh, of this table, uh, sometimes there are the around, result, around, around results for the run, sometimes there are not. Yeah, it's, re it's really not that easy to pass these running results. So what I started was using regular expressions, but even though I have used, I tried my best to make them somehow readable, yeah, you know, if you use a regular expression, you, you get two problems, basically. So um, after, after a short time, I gave up with regular expressions and uh, switched to use uh, a real parser. And what I used for this is PyParsing. It's quite old, but I think a very major library. Um, I've used LEPL before, but unfortunately it's not uh, supported anymore. So I have chosen PyParsing. And I won't go through it in detail. Uh, it's, I think it's a nice DSL for, uh, for a parser generator. You have, this, you have your literals. You uh, can use regular expressions if you need them. You can uh, define parse actions, what you want to do with the with the past expressions, with the results. You want to, maybe you want to generate an abstract syntax tree out of it. Um, you can ignore certain tokens. You can define them as optional. So that's the way we used pipassing to pass these running results. 
Another important topic for Scrapy are items and data providers. So uh, I mentioned that you, you can yield either requests or items from a, from a request function in Scrapy. And items are basically, basically your building blocks. That's the data of interest when you scrape data with Scrapy. Uh, I have an example of, of a, such an item here. Uh, the nice thing is that you Actually, these are just dictionaries, but, then, uh, but they also support input and output processors that these are useful to, uh, to uh, for instance, to, to clean your data, to strip, to strip it, to, to transform your time string into seconds, for instance. You can see, you can parse uh, not finished running results and so on. So this or items and data processors. And you use them like this. Uh, you can ch generate such an item loader, add your uh, values, and then you call load item, and Scrapy will pass them through your defined input and output processors, and does your data, executes your data mainly. So, okay, so now we have our spider. Let's start it. You can just execute scrapey crawl and this spider name. And then you see a whole lot of, whole bunch of outputs. And I've marked the important things uh, like uh, the data pipelines. You see here, I have two data pipelines. Uh, one is just for demonstration purposes uh, uh, to store the items in, in the Mongo database. And the other is to index them with Elasticsearch. And here you see the requests that are executed, the two post requests to my running site. Okay, some more codes. Uh, now uh, I want to store the scrape data in, a, in Elasticsearch. And I use the, the Elasticsearch Python module for this. So I define a, a pipeline and the pipeline is just uh, a class that defines this process item function. I get the item there, and the spider that scraped, that yielded this, this item. And what I basically do here, I, I just store it into the Elasticsearch index by using the, the index function. Uh, yeah, and if you, if you like, you can send them to DevNull here in the pipeline that uh, I mentioned before. You can just raise a drop item if you don't want to have this uh, item into your database. And of course, you need to define your pipelines in, into this uh, uh, list in, in, a, in, in the config pi file, in the settings pi file of, of your Scrapey project. So uh, I barely scratched the surface of, of Scrapey. It can do much more. It can throttle the crawling speeds. Uh, you can define how many parallel requests should be executed. You can define a waiting time between the requests so that you don't get spent by the big sites. So uh, Google and, 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 and Facebook will, will surely notice and ban you otherwise. Um, it supports the robots.txt file by, uh, by a middleware class so that you don't scrape pages that are not intended to be scraped. There's a shell, a scrapey shell. This is really useful for debugging your, your spiders. It's really nice. Uh, I have an example here where I scrape the Python Summit page. So you start scrapey shell with the, with the URL of Python Summit. Uh, then you can execute an, X, an XPuff uh, expression here and get all the talk titles of today's conference. So I just think it's really nice to, to uh, test your XPuff expressions and your spiders. Feed exports are already mentioned. There's even a Scrapey cloud now. It's uh, kind of a Heroku for Scrapey, so you can run your spiders in the cloud. You can um, monitor them. They have built a really nice user interface uh, around, around it. And, of course, you can also 
uh, schedule them at, at specific intervals. This is also all supported for as onto this scrapey cloud. You can pause and resume crawls. And now with the with version 015, you can also test your spiders with contracts. So uh, I'm not sure, I haven't used contracts uh, in my project. I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it, but you can declaratively define uh, what should happen when your spider uh, scrolls an URL. You can say how many items are expected to be yielded, how many requests, the, the items that should be uh, yielded from this, uh, from this uh, parse function. <clears throat> okay, so now we have the data scraped. The data is in our Elasticsearch index. <clears throat> so I want to go shortly over Elasticsearch for those who don't know it already. So Elasticsearch is really a REST and JSON based document store. It uh, is based on Lucene. Uh, Lucene is uh, quite an old project, really major project. Um, it's uh, really uh, sophisticated what you can do with it. Uh, um, it has indexes for all sorts of problems, field types. You can stem your data. You can, you can basically do anything with your data to make it efficient to be searched. It's uh, Apache 2 licensed, and it's also widely used by the big players in the market. For instance, GitHub uses Elasticsearch for the nice code search interface. So now Cube as well. Yeah. So the building blocks of Elasticsearch. For a old school relational database, you have databases, tables, rows, and columns. Now the, for Elasticsearch, you can hardly compare databases to indices, uh, tables to types, rows to documents, and columns to fields. What is really different for, uh, compared to a relational database is that every field is indexed by default. Excuse me? Five more minutes. Five more minutes, okay. So I'm a little bit running out of time. Um, uh, so I'll just go through the rest of the slides uh, quickly. Um, this is how you can create a document. I've used the curl here. Uh, then you see that this, the fields all have a specific type. So uh, I have uh, pace here, I have the age here, and you see these uh, are stored as uh, type long. You can retrieve specific documents. Uh, with a really nice REST interface, REST-based interface. Uh, it supports searching, of course, with uh, query DSL, so you can define your, your filters here. So I have, I, I'm looking for all uh, runners that, have, that are older than 40 and have the name of uh, name highly, and then, then I get these results. So the next step was that we wanted to make a nice query DSL for our specific problem domain to retrieve the running results. And this is how, we, how this running a query DSL looks like. So it's really comparable to what GitHub, for instance, provides. Uh, I have here an exact, exact match, so I want to look up this string exactly like it is written. I have attributes, so I'm looking for all runs for the run uh, with this name, and I'm interested in, in running results with where, I, where the pace was four minutes per kilometer, for between four and five kilometers. So you see uh, the abstract syntax tree of this query here, and what we did was to actually build this, we, we parsed this input, we built the abstract syntax tree out of it, and we generated the, the, the query DSL to, uh, for, for Elasticsearch. So from this query, we generated this, this Elasticsearch query. And I won't go into detail uh, about, the, uh, about the S generation, so we use pi parsing for this as well. Uh, you see here, uh, by default, we are using ends to uh, for the Boolean expressions, like you're used to from, from Google, for instance. 
uh, it's, uh, we, we can define the associativity of the of different operators, uh, if they are unary or binary, and then we actually generate such, a, a, such syntax tree classes. Here is a not, uh, not search operator. Um, this is how this is how we yield the the, the query DSL for Elasticsearch. So finally, we we get, we get the the search expression, we parse it, we generate the query DSL for Elasticsearch, and we use Py Elasticsearch to execute the actual search. And Elasticsearch allows us to define an offset and this number of results. So I just want, shortly want to give a, sh a demonstration. So this is not production ready. It's uh, just an example we did to play with the data. You see here, we have, I, I just passed for, the, for demonstration purposes, uh, purposes. I just uh, executed the scraper that, yield, that uh, got, uh, got all the data for 2013. There are in Switzerland about 210,000 run results and now let's search them quickly. Um, let's say I'm interested in my results where I had a pace of between four and five minutes per kilometer and between 2013 and 2014 and you see we, I got 10 results. So another one is I'm interested in the local race Schlosslauf, where I had a time between 35 and 41 minutes, and the category, this is uh, men, uh, 10 kilometers category, and I get all the run results for this query. And the last one is a query to get all the runs where I was between the rank 1 and 100. So. This is just a start. We think we can do what we also would like to do is uh, uh, completion, auto completion for the queries. Um, we would like to do aggregations, for instance, get me the top 100 uh, runners uh, for this specific race. And uh, yeah, we also plan to do visualizations of the run results. Okay. So that was it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Do we have some questions? We have a few minutes left. One over there. I have a bit of off topic question. How did you deal with the intellectual property? I mean, is it easy just to grab all other web pages and that's reuse a, their results? That's a good question, actually. I don't know. Uh, it's not live yet, so <laughs> we, we, need, we need to see. Yeah? I, I, on, the, on the web page of, of this specific vendor, I, I haven't found anything that is not... It, it's only not allowed to, do, to use it commercially, but I think if we would just uh, do a free application with this data, it should be... I guess it should be okay, but I'm not sure yet, so we need to... See, yeah. Another question here in the front. Yeah. Well. What about the privacy? Because uh, you you show a lot of uh, other people's results, and so the people might have signed up for uh, an event, a running event, mm -hmm. but they may not agree that uh, somebody else is, is uh, getting that data. Okay. Actually, when you uh, participate in a run, then you. Uh, it's in the RGBs there, then you already declare that you're okay, that you find that these res spot results uh, are, are public. So I don't think that this is an issue there. Another question? One here in the front. That's uh, also a fair question. Um, you mean that if I really want to get myself uh, to be sure, then actually there's, not, there's no unique identifier for in, in, the, in the data I've, I've found. So you, there's, a, there's a team name and there's a, there's a city. So you, 
you can pretty, be pretty sure that it, this is you, but there's no uh, universal identification number or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever scrape uh, web pages that are constantly updated? And if so, uh, does Scrapey provide you a way, an easy way to stop when you reach some point where you already have the data for? Yeah, you can. So you mean, it's a question if you can pause and resume spiders or? No, sorry. Uh, let's say that the, some results come up in groups of 10 over the course of several days and uh, you want mm -hmm. your spider to stop, uh, to just get the new ones and stop when you find one that you had already scraped. Is this something that happens uh, in your use case? I haven't experienced that yet. No. Okay. No. So you just get the full set and... Yeah, so currently I, I just uh, got the full set and in the future we, we need to get, uh, scrape the delta. I mean, we know when, 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 the ta when, the, when these races uh, take place. So we just start from there when we page through the running results, yeah. So unfortunately, we're running out of time. Maybe you can discuss this in the, the social event afterwards. All right, let's thanks again.